why is it that so many artists and musicians have such an uncomfortable experience around money and business and that, and that kind of thing in general? This is a really common experience. And you, know, you might have this feeling of ick around asking for money in exchange for your art or your music. Not everybody has a problem with this. And yet, we also have this term for people who really eagerly uh, go for money for their art, and those are the sellouts, right? It's a, it's a derogatory term. Um, and yet, we're all kind of in that position as artists in our society. Um, and it hurts, right? It, that, that's, that's the cause of the ick, and it, it, it's kind of degrading to the soul. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be this way. There's just something about our uh, economics in our society that causes this. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit today, what the real roots of that are, and a little bit, little bit about how you can begin to address that. Um, and I'm going to share something special today. I'm going to read from my upcoming book, Soul Force Arts, The Vital Role of Musicians and Other Artists in a World That's Lost Its Mind. Uh, so I'm going to read an excerpt from that. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll get some good insights from that. So my name is Joseph Arnold. I'm a violinist, an Alexander Technique teacher, and the director of the Soul Force Arts Institute. So I'm writing this book, and right now I'm doing a revision of chapter one, and this chapter one is on the wrongness in the arts. What's gone wrong in the world of arts? And what I mean by that is that so much of the art that we, our society produces, like our architecture, it's all strip malls and parking lots. Right? Our, our most popular music is vacuous and coarse. And you know, the, the, the really heartfelt music or the really heartfelt stuff doesn't often get popular. What gets popular is like something flashy um, or just somebody who has lots of advertising dollars. Like that, that's what gets uh, the most uh, views, the most listens, you know, the, the most fans. Not always the case, but, but a lot of times it is. And this is very unsatisfying for us as artists, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lay out the case here for what's going on. Um, and I, I'm going to do a couple videos about this uh, uh, based on these uh, you know, four different ways in which this happens. So today is going to be about money, but there's also about status, the, the pursuit of status, how that distorts the arts, technology, and power, and how each of these distort the arts in our society. So today I'm going to read a little bit of an introduction that I have to this section and then the a few, few paragraphs on uh, the almighty dollar, what happens to the arts when they are in service of making money <clears throat> or when they are, <clears throat> excuse me, when they are solely in service of making money. All right. So I call this section, For the Glory of Lesser Gods. Even though it appears that the arts have largely been disconnected from their true purpose in our society, they do, in a funny way, still fulfill an aspect of their essential role. Actually, I'm going to pause right here. So their true purpose, I believe the true purpose of the arts in society is to help us transcend the individual ego and make contact and participate with something bigger. God, love, the universe, nature, whatever you want to put it. This is the true purpose of the arts. Great art is what does this, brings us into a state, an altered state of consciousness, of wonder and communion with some, something bigger. All right, so I'll begin again. So even though it appears that the arts have largely been disconnected from their true purpose in our society, they do, in a funny way, still fulfill an aspect of their essential role. As we saw above, the arts have long been used as expressions of spirituality and religion. In this role, the arts both reveal and guide us towards what's most important to us. 
what we value, who we think we are, where we came from, and where we believe ourselves to be going. <clears throat> These are the functions of worship. Even though we live in a largely secular society where many of us claim to no longer believe in any gods, our arts actually tell us a different story. They reveal to us that we do, indeed, still engage in fervent daily worship. It's just that our gods, our money, technology, status, and power. These concerns are the obsessions of our society at large, and our arts reflect this. These are the forces that have turned our arts from their true purpose. And while there's nothing in wrong in particular with money, technology, status, and power, the arts in our society have increasingly been regarded merely as instruments of these aims. And as a result, something essential has been lost. In service of these lesser gods, the arts cannot rise to their greatest potentials and instead become what we see today, hollow, cheap, and dumbed down. This trend has influenced every aspect of the arts in our society. It's what's behind the shallowness of much popular music, the rise of technology at the expense of skill, the obsession with celebrity culture, the intellectual dead end of postmodernism, and even the disintegration of community in our society at large. These are all the result of making art for the glory of lesser gods. All right, so that's the introduction to these four little sections on money, technology, status, and power. Now I'm gonna read the one on money, and my next videos will be about the other ones. The Almighty Dollar. Everywhere we look, the arts are for sale. Music downloads, concert tickets, prints, paintings, dance classes, university arts degrees, home decor, the list goes on and on. The exchange of money for art is now so ubiquitous that it might almost seem like a natural part of the artistic process. And yet, money and the arts have always had an uneasy relationship. After all, how much is a transcendent artistic experience worth? That's a lot like asking how much a sunrise is worth. What makes something true art simply cannot be quantified in terms of money. And yet, quantify we must, because we live in an economic system that requires money for our survival. Few landlords or grocers, for example, will accept a poem or a dance in exchange for rent or ramen. This forces artists to turn our art into a commodity so that it can be exchanged for money which can then be used to buy life's necessities. This exchange, however, necessarily challenges the integrity of our art. This is because what allows for the greatest economic growth is the creation of generic replications that can then be produced at scale. On the one hand, mass production benefits artists because it does, for example, allow for the widespread propagation of our work. But it also comes at a great cost. As author Lewis Hyde wrote, it is possible to destroy a work of art by converting it into a commodity. The drive to make money from art distorts and cheapens it. For instance, pop music is now composed via formulas designed to maximize catchiness, edited with pitch correcting software that masks a singer's lack of vocal technique, and is brought in front of focus groups before release, to ensure marketability and sales. The results, while ear-catching, are often shallow and unsatisfying. Similarly, IKEA brands itself as a place where ordinary people can buy artistic items. But there is simply no comparison between one of their factory-made chairs and a handcrafted shaker antique. And even in art and music schools, the bottom line is king. Economic pressures motivate schools to become like factories for churning out art students. The result of which is that many graduates are saddled with injuries, burnout, and crippling debt. The truth here 
is that the very act of creating something in the interest of economics strips it of what actually makes it art. All right, so I'm sure you've had some experience of this in your life. Um, whether that's just you know, that, that kind of empty feeling that you might get when you're doing a gig, or the little bit of an ick that you feel when you sell a painting, and it, it can feel good as well, right? Um, but there, but something is lost there. Something really special uh, and potent is lost. You know, when you make art just for the purpose of making money, then it's no longer art. It's a commodity. It's a product. And as such, it can't have this transcendent uh, quality. It, it simply can't. The motivation behind creating it is really different. And that comes through in the end product. And both the artist and the audience can feel this. I believe that this is partly why our world has gone mad. It's part of the picture. Um, I, I believe in, in a certain sense that we are all artists, every single one of us, and that even work is a form of degraded art. Um, and there's something inside us that wants to be given and wants to do it well and wants to kind of celebrate that process and make something beautiful and in service of something larger. Um, but our society, which commoditizes everything, disallows that at almost every turn. The people who spend the most time creating a transcendent thing often receive the least amount of money because transcendence doesn't really fit into a, a marketplace. <laughs> like, how are you going to tell that? People try, but it always corrupts the work of art. It always corrupts religion. It always corrupts everything. But there's not like something necessarily fundamentally wrong with making money. We, we've got to make money as an artist, right? got to put a roof over our heads and get food to eat and you know and, and it's it's right and good to be well compensated for giving your gifts well um yeah so it's it's really a conundrum isn't it unless you live in like a, a gift based economy where your art is can be you you, you can like exchange your art for uh, rent, <laughs> or unless like the closest thing in our art economy is the patronage. Unless you have a rich patron who's supporting you to live, so you can just create the way you want to create. We we you know you you have to some extent have to commodify your art. And the extent to which you commodify your art or your teaching, whatever it is that you do, is the extent to which it's going to feel bad and not be satisfying to you or your audiences. The, your art is going to suffer. Um, but the extent, extent to which you can retain your connection to transcendence, your feeling of the art as a gift, and maybe I'll talk about that more, another time about the, the spirit of the gift um, but the more it, it, it you can hold it as a gift then the more satisfying it's going to be to give it and to make it and it's really up to each of us to find ways of doing that and the first step is just this just learning about what's actually going on underneath the surface learning about alternatives and finding ways of making a living 
that retain your connection to source, your connection to something bigger, retain your ability to create something transcendent. That's what's going to help you have a really meaningful, uh, productive, and vibrant artistic life. And that's what Soul Force Arts is about. And that's why I'm writing this book. Um, so if you want to learn more about the book, which I hope will be out mid-2023, um, if you want to, uh, yeah, so then please go to my website, josepharnold.com, and sign up for my newsletter. And you can also subscribe to this channel or click the little like button. Um, and what else? Yeah, if you want to reach out to me, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments about this video. So please do let me know. What touched you? What are you still curious about? What did you disagree with? Um, and you can also study with me. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher. If you're in Philly, you can, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you can take some uh, private lessons in person, or we could also do it over Zoom. Um, very happy to work with um, musicians and artists of all kinds to help you get in touch with a deeper source of wisdom, creativity, love, and ease inside yourself and let that be the basis of your artistic life. And that's what Soul Force Arts is all about. All right, see you next time.